Dixie Lee Ray was one of the first female scientists and politicians in the mid-20th century. She worked in Washington, D.C. and Washington State. She was infamous for her beliefs and actions, though she persevered and continued to gain power. At the time, there were very few women in science and politics. Dixie encouraged young women to pursue degrees in biology and engineering, which were fields largely dominated by men. Dixie gained a lot of enemies, but she broke free from the social norm and followed her beliefs. In the early to mid-20th century, career opportunities were rarely presented to women. Female politicians at the time were not taken seriously and often overlooked by the still dominant male voters. Since women had just recently received the right to vote, many were still hesitant. This caused there to be significantly fewer female voters than males, and many of the male voters at the time did not believe that women were fit to hold a political office. Dixie Lee Ray was the fifth female governor in the United States. To date, there have only been 44 female governors. As of 2019, there are still 20 states that have never had one. Many women were discouraged from studying science. Families were concerned that if their daughter were to pursue a degree in science or engineering, she would never marry. At the time, women were not respected in the workplace, and women were expected to stay at home, have children, and serve their families. Women who went after their own ambitions were considered unmarriable. Women were told that if they were to become a businesswoman or a scholar, they would die alone. Many people did not believe that women were smart enough to succeed in these fields, and women were considered the weaker sex, a problem that discouraged many from following their dreams. I agree there. She said, Dixie, you know, you should, you should really develop your skill in your chosen field. But if ever there comes an opportunity to do something else, then don't turn it down. Because every time you, you, you change and move into a, a different or a new area, you will enlarge your horizons and it will be very rewarding. And she was right. Dixie Lee Ray grew up in Tacoma with her sisters during the Great Depression. She showed a unique interest in science. And after graduating high school, she received a scholarship to, Will to Mills Women's College, where she began her studies. She later received her PhD from Stanford, which was an uncommon thing for a woman to do. She studied marine biology and zoology, and later she became a professor at the University of Washington. Dixie was the first woman appointed to the Atomic Energy Commission. She left the University of Washington to join. As she was jumping from marine biology to nuclear energy, Dixie studied and learned all that she could about atomic energy and physics. With the new information under her belt, Dixie went to meetings and continued to learn until she became an expert. You're not concerned at all about nuclear power uh, being a, a negative? No, not when it's done right, but you have to do right with everything. You know, the internal combustion engine is a pretty dangerous thing unless you handle it right. And uh, we've had an exceedingly fine record in the nuclear industry. It's a record of safety can't be matched by any other industry. Dixie believed that America's energy future lied in the renewable atomic energy using breeder reactors. She went around America on the so-called Dixie Show to convince Americans of the safety and efficiency of atomic energy. She shared that the amount of deaths caused by nuclear energy at the time were minuscule in comparison to those of everyday activities, such as driving automobiles and bathing. Dixie gave many speeches to convince people that the solution to their energy crisis was nuclear energy. At the time, there had been very few nuclear energies, energy emergencies or mass deaths, so people believed that it was safe enough. She told the public that atomic energy was completely harmless and an efficient solution. After drawing attention to her gift for public speaking and political action, Dixie went into government. She later became the assistant to the Secretary of State. <clears throat> Dixie was a unique political figure who broke social expectations along with making decisions that were questioned by many. As assistant to the Secretary of State, Dixie was slowly gaining political power. She had a good career set up for her. However, after a minor disagreement with the current Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, she left her office and headed up to Washington to retire. Instead, she decided that she would not relax. Rather, she was not leaving politics behind. She ran for governor of the state and won. She decided to run as Democrat, not for her actual beliefs, but because she knew that she had a greater chance of getting elected this way. I ran for governor. As a Democrat? Well, you have to, 
let me let me say this. I've never been really interested in party politics, uh, but to to run for a major office, you have to declare yourself, either a, a Democrat or a Republican, if you want to be elected. And as I looked at the situation there, I saw that the Republican slate was full. The Democrats were in total disarray as usual, so I ran as a Democrat. And won. And won. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted, throwing ash into 11 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. The eruption was catastrophic, directly killing 57 people and coating many more in ash. It caused over $1 billion in damage then, now equal to over $3.4 billion. Dixie set up danger zones that saved lives. Dixie was very opinionated. Her views were very difficult as well. She argued for a long time over the energy crisis, but another passionate topic that she loved to argue was the welfare of the environment. Despite fighting against water pollution, she did not believe in climate change. She claimed that the climate had always been changing and humans were not having an impact. After retirement, Dixie lived a peaceful life avoiding the draw of political action. She moved to Fox Island, to the property that her dad had passed to her, where she had lived as a teenager. She lived on the island with her dogs and a variety of other farm animals, and she stayed there until her death at 80 years of age due to a lung condition. Many disliked her political views and actions, but Dixie Lee Ray was a determined individual. She fought for what she believed in and never apologized. The odds were stalked against her, which she chose to be a scientist and later a politician, but she persevered. Washington State has only had two women in the governor's office today. This is just a crack in the barrier that discourages women from seeking success in politics, engineering, and other fields of science.